Hello, let's talk about deep cleaning, scaling, and root planing. You'll notice this patient has got a lot of calculus and plaque and stain build up on the teeth. They also have what's called mottled enamel, where the enamel is white and brown, and this can be caused from minerals in the water the patient is drinking when, they're, when the teeth are forming or could be caused by medication. But this is the before and after of a deep cleaning, scaling, and root planing. When do you call it a deep cleaning, scaling, and root planing, and when is it just a regular hygiene appointment for a cleaning? When the calculus stain and plaque is subgingival, meaning it's under the gingiva, the gums, in my practice, that's a deep cleaning, scaling, and root planing. Now, in my practice, we always do that after the teeth and gums have been anesthetized with local anesthesia. And 99% of the time, the patient is sedated prior to the local anesthesia because I don't want to anesthetize the patient's whole mouth while they're wide awake. So I prefer to do this with local anesthesia, and many times we'll do other procedures while they're sedated. But I, I don't feel like you can do an effective deep cleaning, scaling, and root planing without anesthetizing the teeth and gums because if you do and this calculus plaque and buildup is under the gum tissue, it's probably going to be painful to the patient. That's the way I look at it. Scaling and root planing is always done with local anesthesia. 99% of the time it's done with sedation just because it's a little traumatic to have your entire mouth anesthetized while you're wide awake. You can see all the calculus and plaque and this is under the gum tissue and so the hygienist is not going to be able to clean all that out with just a regular dental hygiene appointment because if they're trying to remove this subgingivally under the gums it's going to be painful. So first this is after the patient's been sedated and you can either, if you're certified, you can either use IV intravenous sedation or you can use oral sedation. Many people do it with Halcyon, which is a sleeping pill. You can sedate people with oral Demerol and Valium, and then we're giving them painless and profound local anesthesia. You can check the link on that video in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com. Now, we, I normally do this in two appointments. The first appointment I generally do myself, and I've anesthetized the patient's whole mouth. Now, where do I give the local anesthesia? I give the patient bilateral mandibular blocks, and I also anesthetize the long buccal nerve, which is just to the facial in the unattached gingiva of the second lower second molar. And then I do bilateral uh, superior alveolar blocks where you first anesthetize with a 30 gauge short and sit in this plane just at the the distal facial line angle of the second molar and anesthetize the tissue then I follow that with a 27 gauge long needle and just barely bend the needle toward the bevel and slide it under that tissue go all the way in with the needle and anesthetize with lidocaine, one to 100,000 epinephrine. And that blocks the superior alveolar nerve. Then I'll also anesthetize facial to the second bicuspid, again with the sit nest and then the lidocaine. Then I'll anesthetize in the maxillary cuspids. That will anesthetize the entire mouth. And I do that while the patient's sedated. You don't have to anesthetize the greater palatine nerve or the nasopalatine nerve. So I begin with this ultrasonic scalar. And at the first appointment, I'm doing gross debridement. And I'm doing most of it with the ultrasonic. A lot of water, just getting the gross calculus and plaque off the teeth and stain. And then the patient will return to a second appointment. And that appointment is with my dental hygienist. And she's going to do a fine scaling and oral hygiene instruction. So at this appointment, I'm going to do gross debridement primarily with the ultrasonic instrument. And then I'm going to come back and do some scaling and root planing, flossing, and polishing. So a light touch, lots of water. You'll see, I, I don't see how you could do this without administering local anesthesia. Especially if the patient had some gingival recession on the facial, that tooth is probably going to be hypersensitive. 
And so by anesthetizing the teeth, you've anesthetized the gingival tissue and eliminated the hypersensitivity in a tooth if it has gingival recession. So I'm just feeling the interproximal surfaces of those teeth from both the facial and the lingual or palatal. Just moving it up and then you see how this is breaking off in chunks from the mandibular anterior. So I'm removing the calculus and the plaque and also the stain with the tip of this ultrasonic instrument. One time someone made a comment, I think it was a, may have been a hygienist, may, hygienist, may have been a dentist, and said that in dental school, they were instructed not to let the tip of the ultrasonic touch the tooth surface. Well, I don't know what that's all about. I don't know how you could possibly remove the calculus and the plaque and, and certainly the stain without the ultrasonic instrument touching the tooth surface. So you're not bearing down hard, but it must touch the tooth surface to remove the plaque, calculus, and stain from the surface of the teeth. So we do the entire mouth at one time. Uh, people have said that they've had it done one quadrant at a time. I'm not sure why you wouldn't go ahead and do everything at once. But you're probably going to want to use sedation. So you can see I'm removing the calculus and the plaque and most of the stain. And then my hygienist will follow up and remove any last little bits of stain that are on the surface of the teeth. Now, why do I do this most of the time and not my hygienist? Because the patient's not going to be sedated with the hygienist. They're going to be wide awake. And I personally don't want to anesthetize a patient's entire mouth with them wide awake. I think that can be a little traumatic. So I want them sedated, and they'll be sedated with me because I'm probably going to do some other procedures in addition to the deep cleaning. So I'd rather have them sedated when I'm administering the local anesthesia. See, we're removing the stain, most of the stain from the teeth. If I don't get every little bit of it, my hygienist will finish that off when they return for the fine scale and polish oral hygiene instruction. Now, how soon do they come back for that? I like the patient to have the second appointment for fine scaling and polishing oral hygiene instruction within a week of this initial gross debridement appointment. Now I'm flossing, making sure all the little bits of calculus and plaque are off the teeth, and they'll probably do some fairly severe bleeding, not to the point of needing a transfusion, but there'll be a lot of bleeding because those gums are irritated from the calculus and plaque on the teeth, and if a patient's got this much calculus, plaque, and stain on the teeth, they probably don't floss their teeth. And flossing, in my opinion, is about at least twice as important as brushing because your lips and tongue sort of keep the teeth clean like brushing. But in between the teeth is where you get a lot of accumulation of food, which turns into plaque and calculus, continues to gum disease, periodontal disease, and really bad breath. Every night, we're going to have this patient rinsing with mouthwash for a minute, flossing their teeth correctly, and brushing with a Sonicare toothbrush, and then rinsing with mouthwash again. If they do that, they don't have to brush again in the morning. They can just rinse with mouthwash because, as most of you know, it takes plaque 24 to 48 hours to build up on teeth. So unless they've eaten something after they've done the nighttime rinse, floss, brush, rinse, there's not going to be anything on the teeth. They can just rinse it off in the morning with mouthwash. And once they rinse, floss, brush, rinse the teeth, then the patient should stick their tongue out and brush it side to side because plaque accumulates on the tongue. So I'm shoe shining in between these teeth knowing we're going to have a lot of bleeding when we do this for the first time because those teeth have probably never been flossed. We're coming back with some scaling and root planing. Then we're going to pumice the teeth. We're going to polish them with pumice and 3% hydrogen peroxide mixed together and then polished in a profi cup. So at this first appointment, I primarily want to get everything off the teeth that's subgingival because the patient won't be anesthetized at the second appointment with my dental hygienist, which is the fine scaling and polishing and oral hygiene instruction. Now, as you probably know, I have videos on how to keep your teeth for a lifetime, how to brush and floss your teeth, and also dental decay explained, along with hundreds of other ones. So we give the patient the link to those three videos, have them watch those videos 
so that they're kind of getting warmed up to how to hold the floss and how to brush their teeth at the gum line and on the biting surface and then how to stick their tongue out and brush it side to side. So when they come back and see our hygienist for oral hygiene instruction, they've got a leg up. They, they have a beginning understanding of how to do that and she can just fine tune it. She's going to show them how to do it, then watch them do it. So now we're just continuing to move, remove any of the calculus and plaque on the teeth, and especially anything that's subgingival with the ultrasonic while the patient is anesthetized and sedated. Once we've done this, and then especially once they've seen the hygienist for the fine scaling and polishing and oral hygiene instruction, those gums tighten up, get pink and healthy, and if the patient will continue with the proper home care, especially the flossing, the gingival tissue will stop bleeding. So I tell the patient, your gums are going to bleed every time you floss and brush your teeth for about three days. And then they'll heal and the bleeding should stop. Just rinsing. And so once I've completed the gross debridement and we've flossed them and polished them, I'm going to take some Perigard or chlorhexidine in a syringe and rinse between each of the teeth. Then they're going to come back a week later and see the, our dental hygienist. And she's going to check the probing depths and then do the fine scaling and polishing. Then once she's done this, she's going to go over oral hygiene instruction. Probably watch those videos again, especially the one on how to brush and floss your teeth. And then go over the patient exactly how to hold the floss and use the thumbs and the pointer finger to floss correctly. You know, I'm such a, I'm such a visual learner. If you tell me something, it's probably going to go right over the top of my head. But if you can show me how to do it and let me do it, there's have your hygienist show the patient how to wrap the floss around these middle fingers and then use the thumbs for the maxillary teeth and the pointer fingers for the mandibular teeth and how you shift fingers and shift thumbs depending on what side you're on and the sequence of rinse for a minute, floss correctly, brush with a sonic hair and rinse again. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of mechanical toothbrush. I really like the Sonicare. We don't have any tie to the Sonicare, but we can tell when a patient comes in for a dental hygiene appointment if they use the Sonicare or not. I saw a patient yesterday, and she's been a patient for a few years, and I thought she had a Sonicare, but she didn't. And I said, you don't use a Sonicare, do you? She said, no, I just never have gotten one. Well, you can tell because they've got more buildup on the teeth and the gums get more irritated than somebody that uses a Sonicare. As with a handheld toothbrush, you're going one, two, three, four, five. A Sonicare, you're going bzzz, five. 500, bzzz, 1,000, and the patient wants to brush right at the gum line, but tell them don't waste their time brushing if they don't also floss. Flossing is more important than brushing if you want healthy gums and fresh breath, because if you don't floss your teeth, you get buildup between the teeth, and you're going to get periodontal disease, you're going to get interproximal decay, and that wonderful dead possum breath from that food build up between the teeth that's just rotting. I personally probably wouldn't date a girl that didn't floss her teeth because that breath is going to be so rancid and you can, you can rinse with mouthwash all you want but that rotting food is going to be between your teeth so floss your teeth correctly. Watch that video on how to brush and floss your teeth. So now she's polishing with this and we put a drop of either hydrogen peroxide or tooth bleach in the polishing paste that just lightens the teeth up just a little bit. You can see how much better they look and how much healthier the gums are. They're not, this is just a week later and already there's not much bleeding. Now if the patient doesn't execute proper home care, the calculus and plaque and stain are going to form on the teeth again and they're going to be right back in the same boat within several weeks or a month. So you're going to rinse that off. It's just a little thing. When I'm getting my teeth cleaned, I like to hold the slow speed suction myself so that whenever I feel like I need to suction out, I can just go, mm, and she can let me take a break and suction any liquid out of my mouth. Well, that's something that your patients might like to do. I love to get my teeth cleaned. This feels so refreshing. So she's not having to go subgingival at this appointment because I did all of that while the patient was anesthetized and sedated. She's just fine-tuning 
the super gingival, mainly stain, shouldn't be any plaque on the teeth, and then reinforcing proper home care. You can see how much better they get. A little bleeding up here, but that will go away within a week or so if the patient is executing proper home care. So here's the before and after, and that's the dental minute. These techniques work, and they work every time. Don't you want to take your practice to the top tier? Subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com for an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, plus many complete comprehensive cases and so many important articles that you can only find right here. New cases are added weekly and it's only $20 a month. Subscribe today.